Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I am going to give you a tour through my little supplement case. So you can see in here all my different supplements. I'm going to give you a tour of what I've got in here. These are my supplements that I take pretty much daily. I'm going to walk you through what they are, why I take them, like what is what is the point of like what is, what is it that I'm trying to achieve with it and how I'm using them optimally. And I'm sharing this with you because, first of all, I think it's really interesting. I mean, this little travel case is so handy. It's so cool. If you don't have one of these yet, you should get one. They are, they're, they're really nice. They have several different compartments. So you can see, like, I'll give you a little close-up. So I'll actually take guesses. If you've got any guesses what any of these are, I think this one is, uh, this one here is quite telling. Uh, also, this one here is is quite quite an easy guess, if, if you ask me, but... Let me know your guesses. What do you think I have in here? What do you think I have? And I'm actually going to surprise you. There's actually no probiotics in here. I don't take I take my probiotics first thing in the morning. So they're not in here. So there's no probiotics in here, which might surprise you. But I'm going to walk you through everything I've got in here. And I've got all the bottles, so we can really go into this and I can talk about this and we can have, have a lot of fun together. So first of all, let me just say, anything I tell you today, I'm not telling you to do. That's kind of like a... A prerequisite of all of my videos. I'm not telling you to do anything. I'm going to tell you what I'm doing and I'm going to help you understand why I'm doing these things and what I'm hoping to achieve with them. If you can extrapolate meaning from that, if you can figure out, oh, maybe this would be a good thing for me to try, cool, go ahead and, and try it. Like, you, you do you. I'm bringing you this information to try and help you, but I'm not telling you to do anything. So let's go through it. So I'm going to walk you through this in no particular order. Let's just start with the digestive enzyme. So, this is the digestive enzyme that I use. It is not the best digestive enzyme. It's actually pretty crap if you ask me. It works for me, which is great. I'm, I currently have the luxury of not being intolerant to almost anything. Like, I can be pretty relaxed. I don't, it doesn't really matter if I have excipients or fillers or, or anything like that. So, I can get away with it. I could not have got away with this when I started. I mainly get this one. So this is Comfort Zone by Solgot. This is a digestive enzyme that contains all of your pancreatic digestive enzymes. So you've got the amylase, protease, uh, lipase, those sorts of things. It also has some other more broad spectrum enzymes. For example, bromelain, cellulase, papain, invitase, maltase, pectinase. And it actually has a botanical comfort blend of a couple of different herbs. So cumin powder, chamomile, anise powder, fennel extract, ginger extract, and then it's got some some crap, like they all do, like bulking extracts, um, microcrystalline cellulose, maltodextrin, hydroxypopyl methylcellulin capsule, silicon dioxide, magnesium stearate. The reason I'm showing you this is, this is not perfect. Like, there's a way, like, personally, I would way prefer to be going with something like an Enzymedica, Lipogold, Digest Gold, Digest Basic. These are what I recommend to my clients generally. I'm showing you this because you do not have to be perfect to heal. You do not have to do the perfect, perfect thing. This is one third the price of Enzymedica, and I can get it at my local health food store, and it works for me. So I'll, I'll use it, you know, you do not have to be perfect. So this is what I'm using. I take two of these with every single meal. If I have a snack, I'll have one. I, this is one supplement, or digestive enzymes are one supplement I've taken for probably the longest out of all of my supplements. Yeah, let's say that. That is the supplement I have taken the most of for the longest time. It's something that I'm sure, when my body is ready, will very clearly tell me we don't need to take these anymore. However, when I take digestive enzymes versus when I don't, I notice enormous differences in my digestion, in my energy levels, and, I mean, I haven't really experimented with it in a while, but I just know that this is a big one for me. So this is something that I take two of with every single meal throughout the whole day, and it's, it's pretty religious. If I miss it, I feel it. If I miss this, if I if I if I don't take this with a meal, I will feel it. I will not feel very good. It can trigger a gut health flare up for me. So my body needs these right now. This is kind of a, a general rule of thumb. You should feel it. You should feel supplements. Like you shouldn't be you're taking it and you're like, I don't know if this helps. I don't know if this is doing anything at all. I don't feel better or worse. I don't feel anything. That's generally a red flag. That means you probably don't need it or it's not really a meaningful supplement for you. So digestive enzymes, they're my number one. Next, we will go to this. So this is this is zinc. This is a zinc supplement. I have never taken zinc before. This is the first time I'm taking zinc as a supplement. The reason that I'm doing this is 
I have gastritis, so I have gastritis-like symptoms, so like a burning sensation in my stomach. This can, this can be caused by a zinc deficiency, and it can cause a zinc deficiency. And it's something I've never tried. So I didn't test my levels, I didn't do anything, I just thought, I haven't ever supplemented zinc in my, in my journey. I had several symptoms that were indicating that I needed it. So slightly less ability to taste food. Um, low immunity and like a weak immune response the stomach symptoms it was like i'm gonna try it so again very imperfect brand this is just some like crappy brand that i found in thailand it is a decent form it's zinc amino acid chelate so it's it's pretty good it's a it's a it's pretty good form when you're getting minerals generally you want to be going for amino acid chelates these are the most bioavailable forms so this is true of zinc but also of any other minerals so you're going to see that again when we look at mr magnesium over here so I'm just going to use the bottle and then I'm going to stop. That's it. When you're using supplements kind of in this way, I think it's, it's generally better to use it, finish the bottle, stop, and see how you feel and see what happens. And if you feel like you need it again, go back on it. But when you are supplementing single nutrients, you can throw other things out of balance. So you have to be mindful of that. And the best way to protect yourself against it is don't do it forever, especially if you don't need it. So zinc is balanced with well, primarily with copper, but also with a whole bunch of other nutrients, especially like the, the like the tiny, tiny trace elements, like the molybdenum and the vanadium and the chromium and all these little ones. So I'm going to finish the bottle and I'm going to stop. But I have noticed since taking this, I'm having significantly stronger immune responses. And I think that's exactly what my body needs right now. So I'm going to follow this up with this one because it's the same brand and it kind of ties in with the 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 thing that I was trying to achieve. So again, kind of kind of a crappy brand. <coughs> Excuse me. Not the not the best brand in the in the whole world, but I really like it. So this is Acerola Cherry. So this is basically a vitamin C supplement. Before I tried this one, I tried a more expensive liposomal form and it didn't work for me. It, I found it really irritating for my stomach and I find even this can be irritating to my stomach sometimes, but it's significantly less. And I think the reason for it is it's a it's a it's a plant-based extract. So a lot of vitamin C supplements that you get, they're basically, you get some kind of substrate, usually corn or something like that, and then they put mold on it or a bacteria or something, and then they eat it and they produce vitamin C. And then they, they scrape that vitamin C off and then they put that in a liposome or they put that in a supplement. That's fine for most people, but if you are sensitive to, to, to mold or, or mycotoxins, or if you have, uh, like, so for me, like, taking an, an acid like so vitamin c is ascorbic acid is a bit irritating for my stomach it doesn't really work for me so doing it in a in a plant-based way like a more of, closer to a whole food form it is still an extract it's still concentrated but it's not a synthetic version it's not created in a lab it's not created with um like bacteria or yeast or something breaking it down it's just take the plant concentrate it down so it's more of a whole food form i find i tolerate this better another reason i really like this is this supplement also contains, so it's got acerola cherry extract, but it also has citrus bioflavonoids, pomegranate extract, and grapeseed extract. So the thought process here is vitamin C by itself is a powerful antioxidant. But if you combine it with bioflavonoids, it amplifies the power. It like, it like multiplies it. So if you've got like a thousand units of vitamin C and 200 units of a bioflavonoid, you, you then have an effective dose of like 2,000 units of vitamin C instead. Like they work synergistically together. And this makes sense because if you look at vitamin C in nature, you never find it by itself. You always find it, so specifically in vegetables, in raw vegetables and, and fruits, and it always contains other bioflavonoids with it. You do not find isolated vitamin C in nature. It just doesn't exist. So putting bioflavonoids with vitamin C, in my eyes, makes a lot of sense. It's a really, really good idea. It makes it significantly more like natural or it, it, it enables the body to use it in a more effective way. I would also say that this vitamin C is, I'm using this as a part of my, um, my antioxidant loading concept. So if you didn't see that, go and check out, check it out on YouTube. So you can go on YouTube, type William Dickinson antioxidant loading. We're looking at basically loading the body up with different levels of antioxidants so that it can get on top of any oxidative debt that it has. So you start with earthing, you go through to juicing, then you look at certain forms of antioxidants like vitamin C or NAC or like alpha lipoic acid or things like that. And then you're moving on to glutathione as well. And you're stacking these things up. So 
I have a glutathione supplement I'm not taking. I tried it. It was way too harsh for me. So I'm starting here and I'm building my way up and then that will, that will enter at, at some point when, when my body is ready for it. This is actually on pause right now. I haven't taken this for the last four or five days because I'm working on introducing a new probiotic which is causing some abdominal stuff. So I'm just letting that work while and not throwing extra variables in the situation and causing unnecessary like digestive discomfort so that this one currently is shelved but it will be back on very very soon this is a big bottle listen really big bottle there's like 150 tablets in here so pretty cool so next let's go to magnesium so this is the magnesium i have this is actually in german this is a german company what's really important here is is this number so this eight, this is eight different forms of magnesium. When you're using a magnesium supplement, it is really, really helpful if you take a magnesium supplement that has different forms of magnesium. And again, preferentially, we want the amino acid chelate versions. The ones you really don't want are like magnesium oxide, magnesium chloride, magnesium sulfate. These are not good supplements orally. Magnesium sulfate is great in your bath. Epsom salts is great. In an oral supplement, the absorption rate of, of those three that I just listed is like below 10%. And I think magnesium oxide and sulfate is like as low as 4%. It's really bad. It's really not that good. So ideally, you want... So this is in German, so I'm going to struggle here. But So this one has got magnesium gluconate, which is an amino acid chelate. Magnesium taurate, which is, a magne which is again, an amino acid chelate. Magnesium lactate. I don't know if that's an amino acid chelate. I don't think it is. But there you go, there's another form. Magnesium bisglycinate, which is an amino acid chelate. And then we've got magnesium citrate and, and another one. I don't know, it's, again, it's in German. Ideally, you're going for at least five or six forms, as many of them being amino acid chelates as possible. You want to really avoid the chloride, the oxide, the sulfate. They're not really that good. You want the bisglycinate, you want the L3 and 8. Generally, if it ends in an 8, that's kind of the one you want. That's more of a, an indicator of it being a, an amino acid chelate. You've got on the, on the zinc, you've got the chelate. So like a good one there is picolinate. That's a really nice one. So if it's ending in 8, generally that's a good option. So having different, different forms of magnesium means it will plug in in different, different places in your metabolism. So L3 and 8 prefers to go to your brain. Like different forms will go to different organ systems. They will plug in at different parts of your metabolic process and it will provide more of a benefit to you. It's more, it, it's significantly more effective than just taking like a, a single form of, of magnesium and generally avoid those, those, those three that I mentioned. Not really very helpful. So next we have methylation support. So we have methylfolate. Again, this is a German company, but you can see it's 5 MTHF, 1 milligram. I take this every single day. If I don't take this every single day, I basically die. Like, I need this. This is something that my body kind of cannot function without. I'm so grateful that I have this as a supplement because before I was able to tolerance, tolerate supplements, I had to get this dose of folate through juicing. So this looked like juicing, we're talking like, I think it was four kilograms of kale juice every single day. And that is not an experience that I would wish on anyone. But that is the only way that I could tolerate getting that much folate into my body. Now, I can just pop one of these little pills. Like, it's so much easier than having to juice four kilograms of kale a day. God, that was, a, that was an experience. I'm glad that's finished. So this methylation support, I have the genetic mutation MTHFRC677T. So this basically just means that that gene doesn't count it doesn't mean anything i don't have a problem i do think that in the long run you can come off methylation support if you are able to reduce the your need so you can reduce your toxic exposure and get on top of your oxidative debt which again we've got big boy vitamin c over here and the the glutathione that i'll work on with the juicing and the and the grounding but also you're supposed to produce this you're supposed to produce b complex vitamins in your gut and folate is is one of these so correcting a gut flora imbalance is really really important in resolving methylation issues because that is where you would have produced your folate before you lost those like gut bacteria you often see 
methylation issues popping up after like a, uh, a chronic mold exposure or a course of antibiotics or something like that you know it's because you've just destroyed those flora in your gut that were producing those things for you and now you need to take them in your food if you look at the concentrations of methylfolate in food it's really low it's really hard to get like this kind of dose like one milligram from whole foods like i was juicing four kilograms of kale a day to get it that was the only way that i could do it you'd have to be eating like five cups of chickpeas like no one's doing that that's just not realistic the way that you get folate is from your gut you don't get it from food it so work on your gut again but again that, that take that takes so much time you know you can't rush that so in the short term this is what i'm doing i will say i also take b12 injections i do a b12 injection usually every other day sometimes once every three days or four days you know because like life happens and stuff gets in the way and you forget i mean i have an alarm on my phone and that's a methylcobalamin injection and i do it into my into my abdomen so that's like a sub subdermal so into the into the fat around your belly i do that every two days as well so i find that not doing b12 injections i can't get my levels up using supplements probably connected to the stomach issue that i described so again zinc is working on that next we have this is a really cool one. I think I'm going to make a whole video on this just because it's really cool. This is sunflower lecithin. And you can't, it doesn't make any noise because they all stick together. There you go. You can hear it now. Sunflower lecithin. So this is really cool because it is actually a methyl donor. It plugs in in a different part of your methylation cycle. It plugs in at the, around the BHMT. It's called the BHMT shunt. So this is a really cool option to provide methyl, methylation support if you don't tolerate like a folate supplement or methyl B12. This can be really, really cool. This is also really helpful if you have gallstones, gallbladder sludge, uh, poor fat digestion. There's a really good chance that these issues are all linked. You know, it's a methylation thing. This is a really, really cool supplement. So one thing is it contains choline, phosphatidylcholine, which is, this is that methyl donor, but it also helps your body with creating new bile. There are other compounds in it that are, they, they basically are emulsificants. So they help your body to emulsify fats. I use this, so I use this specifically when I am, when I eat a meal that is high in vegetable oil. So vegetable oils, very inflammatory. Um, your liver will struggle to digest them. And I can, I can feel it. Like if I eat like a fish and chips or like a burger or something that's really high in vegetable oil, I don't really feel good. I kind of can feel my liver meridian. Like I feel it in my in my chest, I feel it, and I can feel it in my head as well. And I don't feel that don't feel that good from it. Like I can notice it. If I take this with it, so these are the these are these big boys over here. Like these are, if you don't like taking pills, these ones are absolutely horrible. You will not enjoy taking these. These are like the biggest supplements I've ever seen. So I take these with vegetable oil, and they really seem to mitigate the effects. They make my liver like really happy. Um, if I'm just having a normal sized meal, I have one. If I'm doing like a really big meal, I'll, I'll have two. But I find these to be really effective for helping me with tolerating um, the vegetable oil. For me, it's really important that I can eat whatever I feel like because some of my core values are abundance and freedom. And being able to feel abundant and like I have freedom has been really helpful in my, in my healing process. So being able to eat, let's say like suboptimal food, and I'm, I'm far from like you have to be perfect. But vegetable oils, they kind of have a special place in hell. Like they're really not that good for health. I, I will say that. So this seems to help my body mitigate some of those effects. And this has been a really effective supplement for many of my clients as well, especially with gallbladder issues, methylation. So if you're, if you're, if you're like, you have fat digestion problems, you have methylation problems, you have gallbladder problems, this could be a game changer for you. Really, really effective. And finally, I have my adaptogen complex so i actually have another one that i'm using as well this one's like half full the other one's nearly empty i don't again kind of like i was saying with with the zinc like i like to finish it and then move on so i mean there are exceptions i've used this methylation this B, this uh b9 brand for like years i've i've only used i think this is my first bottle of this so but i probably will get more just to have with vegetable oil and like i stick with this quite religiously this digestive enzyme but I previously used a different blend of adaptogens. Now I'm using a different one. So this one has got ashwagandha. Oh my God, this is going to be really hard to say. I'm going to embarrass myself here. Bacopa, Moniri, Holy Basil, Rhodiola Rosea, Shisandra, 
cordyceps, gotucola, Siberian ginseng, Panax ginseng, astragalus, and black pepper. I don't think the black pepper is in there as an adaptogen. I think it's to help with the absorption of the other things. So this is an adaptogen. Adaptogen. I have a video on adaptogens. So you can go and check my channel. You know, go on YouTube. William Dickinson, how to use adaptogens. There's a whole video on it. But basically, adaptogens help your body adapt to stress. I'm trying to break through the last layers of adrenal fatigue and I'm starting to train again. So I'm starting to do training like like weightlifting, like like physical more physical exercise. And just having an adaptogen in in the mix is a nice little buffer to just help my body with handling any this like extra stress load. So I use I was using a different one. Now I'm using this one. When I finish this one I might get another bottle I quite like this one. I might get another bottle. But then I'll probably move on to something else. Um, switch it up, you know, keep your body guessing, like make sure it never knows what's coming. <laughs> keep it unpredictable. So that is everything in here. That is everything in my, in my little supplement box. This is really handy. If you don't have one of these and you travel or you are often like away from your supplements or, or you just like to be organized, like this is so handy. I'm staying, I'm staying in, in a, in a family house at the moment, not in my, not in my own house. And instead of having like 50 bottles of supplements out on the table, I just have this. And it's really, really convenient. It's really nice. It also works really well if you're traveling. Like you can just pop this out in the airplane and you can take everything that you need. You don't need to like be rustling through your bags trying to find like 50 different bottles. So really handy. If you don't have one of these, you should get one. And if you like this video, please let me know and I will get my wife on and we'll have a look at what is in my wife's supplement box because she has completely different supplements to me. So if you like this video, if you liked kind of the approach, you know, let's look at the supplement. What is it for and how do you use it for best effect? And you want and you want me to do that with my with my wife with her supplement box as well. So in in her case we're looking more at treating hormone issues, namely like PCOS. Let me know because this would be really fun to do with her and I'd I'd really love to do it for you. So if you enjoyed it and you'd like to see a part 2 where we go through my wife's that would be really fun for me to do, so, so let me know. If you have any questions about anything that I talked about in the video today, please let me know. And if you like this kind of thing, if you like me talking about supplements, I'm also thinking about doing the top 10 supplements just from my experience with my clients. So if you'd be interested in that, also be sure to let me know. So I hope you find it really helpful. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.